Martín, usted le apalacó la combat la po, Valerí, Río. And I don't know who that was or why I have that dream so often. <coughs> Whoa. Yeah. I remember one dream I had where Bigfoot could talk and, and his entire species used to rule over us. And now they want to take over the world again. That's dumb. Is 420J not the fattest blunt you've ever smoked? That this is the only blunt I have ever smoked and all my past lives are feeling it. You know, I heard a guy inhaled one of these so hard he swallowed the joint and temporarily jumped into another dimension. What's the matter, Connor? I thought that'd make you laugh. Do you know what that means? My dream. That's a little too Freudian for my taste, Connor. Well, I'm not a Freud of anything. Oof, oh, wow. That one hurt. The boy is you and the priest is the foundation. There, boom. Too obvious. You've been here since you were three, right? I mean, what else did you ever have to worry about other than being hacked, slashed, and drawn in quarters for 19 years? I don't know. The day the foundation told me that I had a mom? That kind of bummed me out for a while. Then I got over it when I started masturbating. Ooh. Those two things aren't connected. Mr. Connor, report to General Marcus in Psychwing Sector 5 immediately. Oh my god, he's going to kill me. Probably twice if I'm late. Bye, Nat. Love you. You're late, Connor. Sorry, sir. What's the matter with your eyes, boy? I was up all night reading, sir. Reading what? Words, sir. <laughs> At ease, soldier. Now I'm about to brief you on your mission. If you choose to accept it, not that it matters, since you have no choice. You really like making that joke, sir. The next 24 hours of your life will be unforgiving. It will involve traveling across national borders and making contact with a previously unknown hostile entity. And furthermore, you are one quarter Eskimo on your mother's side, correct? I don't know. Well, according to the DNA swab you took four weeks ago, you share ancestry with the Eskimo people of Nunavik, Canada. This is crucial to the mission. Oh, well, I guess so, sir. But I think they prefer being called Inuits, not Eskimos. Oh, you're only a quarter, get over it. We head out in ten minutes. Must be a great view out there, sir. Oh, it is, Mr. Connor. That mountain looked like a breast, doesn't it, Lieutenant? Sure does. It's to protect normalcy, soldier. What if the van crashes and people see your regenerative ability? They already believe in ghosts, aliens, and resurrecting Jews, sir. We can't hide them all, Connor. We can't hide them all. Yeah, I know, it's pretty miserable. Dr. Marlowe's in there. Oh, and uh, he's currently possessed by a ventriloquist dummy. It's a little jarring, but Marlowe's the best marine biologist in North America, so we can't afford to fire or kill him. Good luck, soldier. Hey, is this the right place? Whoa, hey there, guy. I'm Dr. Marlowe, and this is my lab assistant, Dinkelman. Hey. You must be the test dummy from the States. Oh, sorry, mind my wording. Look at me calling you the dummy, right? <laughs> uh. I know this is a little odd to look at, a little unusual. There's some water on the floor, the bookshelves unorganized, there's a human arm up my rectum, but trust me, we are professionals and this is a serious research facility. <laughs> Come this way, friend. This is SCP-1836. It's an iceberg accompanied by several previously extinct species of hostile aquatic predators supernaturally piloted by a female of Inuit descent. She seems to really enjoy sinking vessels and feeding their occupants to her porpoise friends. The only people who ever survived these attacks are sailors and fishermen of Inuit descent, like yourself. We're going to need you to make proper contact with her. Sing her a song. She might get Inuit. <laughs>
Kinaovi, Kina, took a sitting ya. Excuse me? But you are Inuk, like me. A, a quarter, yeah, but I don't speak it. Are you a spirit? Psh, I don't know. I was sent here to ask questions, like what's the deal with the ethnic cleansing? It's not ethnic cleansing. They do not ask for permission to hunt. Now I ask. Oh, uh, okay. What are you doing here? Oh boy. Well, there's this foundation of people who like to capture and learn about things that fall out of the norm, and- And you're one of them? God, you're worse than Ferdinand. Yes, but I also work with them. You are submitting to their demands, like a sled dog? I prefer the term lab rat. Wait, no, no I don't. It doesn't matter. Point is, I have no choice. This is all I can do. The sooner you can answer my questions, the sooner I can leave you alone to look for your fingers. Okay, I forgot the questions. Uh, what are you doing here? That's a good one. I was escaping from my father. He wanted me to marry a man named Aguta. This man looked just like you. Very handsome. Bit weird, but thanks. But I did not want to marry. I did not want to do many things, my father said. My father discovered that Aguta was an evil spirit. We rowed away to escape him, but I fell into the ocean. When I clung to the side of the boat, my father cut my fingers off. Ouch. Guess he really hated spirits. I mean, he must have known you'd become this iceberg whale goddess, right? The last thing he would do was give me my freedom. It was my will that kept me alive all of these years. My parents were underprotective of me. And by that I mean they weren't there. The foundation told me that my mother abandoned me in an empty parking lot. No note, or whatever. Just left me there in the back seat of an old car, roasting away. Some poor old lady found a car full of dead babies one afternoon, and that's when the foundation got me. From what I've learned about my cellmates and feel-good lifetime dramas, the ultimate goal of a parent is to keep their child safe and happy, even if they're dicks about it. Um... Could you comb my hair? <sighs> you gotta comb? Yeah, his funeral was okay. Not the best one I've been to this month. No, he's the guy that confused 173 for 096. How the fuck do you have a signal up here, Philip? Look, something's coming. Just a bird. Not even a cool one like an ostrich. Well, I've got nothing better to do. Don't waste your ammo, Lieutenant. Be careful, Gary. It might have a sharp beak. Come on. Get. Get. Connor. That sounds like a woman's name. Ow! Aitak, Sana? Hmm. You almost pronounced it correctly. I have never met another orphan before. Anipit sana, takuna khana kani. Akavani. Sana. I want to be alone. I am not your wife anymore. I did not come here for that. We have left you alone for thousands of years. You will be dead soon. You cannot deny that. And when that hour comes, your father has asked me to take you to him in the afterlife. So he could control me there too? So he could tell you how proud he is of you. He cut off my fingers. Yeah. Well, Dad's be like that. He knew that you had a will strong enough to defy death itself, unlike him. He needs you. You don't have to answer his call, but... Take me to him. Lee. I'm not
Was the one I caught when I saw your finger. 